podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla matthews Coleman. So let's get started. Hey, hey, friends, welcome, welcome back to the show. Today in the guest chair, I have April Showers. Entrepreneur, innovator, and founder, April is the creator of Afro Unicorn, a fully licensed character amplifying representation for women and children of color to celebrate how magical, unique, and divine they truly are. When Afro Unicorn creator April Showers realized that her favorite emoji, the unicorn, was only available in white, she was inspired to create a more inclusive, conscious brand. Shattering the glass ceiling, Trailblazer April is the first Black woman to own a fully licensed character brand with presence in seven major retailers across the United States and Canada with 25 categories from apparel and accessories to toys, puzzles, books, bedding, backpacks, collectibles, and more. Some other fun facts about Afro Unicorn. Afro Unicorn works with over 45 licensee partners worldwide. And over the past year, Afro Unicorn has grown from one to 25 product categories with 500 SKUs across the US and Canada, including the number one luggage brand at Walmart and a featured brand at Target with three pull togethers in the women's, girls and toddler girls categories. Afro Unicorn is one of the first licensed brands to have a full texture hair care line with Afro Unicorn magical tresses included in both Walmart and CVS this fall. If that's not enough, a new line of six original Afro Unicorn books under the Random House Books for Young Readers imprint will be released widely in fall 2023, featuring three Afro Unicorn characters by name across all Afro Unicorn products. So April is a prolific public speaker. She's very inspiring. She's been featured on ABC News, Good Morning America 3, What You Need to Know, and CBS Mornings. They all created segments on Afro Unicorn. And Oprah Daly, Viola Davis, Sherry Shepard, Alicia Keys, and Tina Knowles are all early believers. April hopes her success is the blueprint to empower and inspire fellow entrepreneurs to enter the licensing space. She shared so much advice and gems and things I didn't know. So let's get right into it. All right. All right. April, welcome. Welcome to the Side Hustle Pro guest chair. Thank you for having me, Nikayla. I am very excited to have you. I actually recently, I can't believe it, but that's why this show exists, right? I just recently learned about you when I put out a call on social, like, who else should I interview before I go on maternity leave? And I learn about the amazing thing you have done having this licensed character. All right. So take me back. When were you first bitten by the entrepreneurship bug? Probably age 14. Really? What happened at 14? Um, I just always felt that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Before I even get started, let me just say um, that your podcast is the very first podcast I've ever downloaded on my phone. Really? Oh my God. Thank you. That's an honor to me because I remember the first podcast I downloaded and I still just... uh... (laughs) Yeah, so, so right, so right <laughs> when I you. kicked off, because I've been, you'll find out right. I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time, but right before I kicked off this brand that we're going to talk about, um, someone told me about your podcast. Yeah. I didn't even know what podcasts were. And I didn't even know I had it on yes. my phone, but Relatable. I, yes. I, the <laughs> very first podcast that I ever downloaded on my phone was your podcast. So I'm so happy. It's a full circle moment. Wow. Okay. So at 14 years old, um, I started like in high school managing groups, like 14, 15, managing little gospel groups, booking them at churches and stuff like that. And then 19, I had my own personal assistance agency where I was hiring other young girls like myself to be PAs for other celebrities. And I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit for a long time. That's amazing. Where were you in your life when the idea for Afro Unicorn came about? So I was between a rock and a hard place. (laughs) 
honestly, I, um, <laughs> so I, a little bit of background about me and how I started out for Unicorn. I am a serial entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I only operate an insurance agency, a state farm agency, and I, I'm also a licensed real estate okay. broker. But I felt like, especially with the, the insurance piece of it, yes, it is my state farm, but I didn't feel like true ownership in it. Because if I die, the way that their model is set up, it's going to go to somebody else. It's not going to go to my children. And so I started to think I had been in real estate for a very long time because I was 22 years old before I got into insurance. And I started to like say, you know what? You need something for legacy building, like something that you can pass on. And although I love the opportunity that I have with the insurance world and I learned so much, which we could dive into, but. I really wanted something that I can truly earn, own Mm. and pass on. And I started Googling and I landed up on this website called the better lemonade stand. I think that's, that that was it. And it talked about never relying on one source to dictate your livelihood. And it gave you different options that you can have for side hustles. And one of them was a t-shirt brand. So the word Afro unicorn, that's the name of my brand came to me because my friend kept referring to me as an Afro unicorn. Well, as a unicorn, because I had the multiple businesses. I'm a single mother of two amazing young boys. And he kept telling me that I was a unicorn. So when I went to go finally say, Cortez, why do you keep calling me a unicorn? He said, well, because you're Mm -hmm. managing these businesses, you're raising your boys, you are a unicorn. Like I'm a woman. He's like, no, you do it at an extraordinary level. You are indeed a unicorn. I Googled them. I saw they were unique. They were mystical. I said, I'm definitely unique. I'm definitely black girl magic. So I started to use my emoji, that emoji in our phones over and over again. And then one day it just hit me. Like, I mean, why is it not black? I went to go find one that looked like me. I couldn't find one. And so instead of complaining about it, I decided to create it. And I created it in mine for other entrepreneurs. Like that's what I was being identified as a serial entrepreneur. And I went just to give us this beautiful unicorn to represent who we were. And when I got ready to launch it, it just turned into something very magical, unique, divine, and magical. Now walk us through the first steps of creating this character. What did that look like? So in the beginning, it wasn't a licensed character brand. I created a an image to represent who we were and I wanted to have it on a shirt. So I created this beautiful unicorn to represent who I was. It was my avatar and I decided to get it screen printed and put it on a shirt. So that's how the first product started. What did you do after it was on a shirt? You had it for yourself. Did someone stop you in the street? Did that inspire you to create more or sell it? So no. I launched Afro Unicorn with a mission to help other entrepreneurs. On April 28th, I invited 25 women to my home and I had shirts all prepared for them. The unicorn shirts, Afro Unicorn shirts. And I said, look, I'm creating a space Mm -hmm. for us to motivate, encourage and help each other. There's a quote that if they don't give you a seat at the table, you bring your own folding chair. I had a long table for um, with folding chairs wrapped around for those 25 women. Some of them had side hustles. So I purchased from their businesses and I said, I'm purchasing 25 items to give to the other women. And I want us to be our own resource where we tap into each other and we build. This is a brand that I'm starting. It's Afro Unicorn. This is what it's all about. We're going to take photos of you today. We're going to do videos of you. So on that day, I had a photographer take photos of all of them, their unicorn shirts. I wrote bios about all of them. I didn't ask them any questions. They didn't even know what they were coming to. But I wrote bios to talk about what made them unique, divine, and magical. I have a special gift of seeing um, potential into other people mm-hmm. and being able to help pull that out of them. We got them on video asking them, what did they think when they heard the word Afro unicorn? What is black girl magic to you? What would you tell your younger selves? And from there, I had all this content. I had Mm -hmm. all their video responses. I had all these photos and it was supposed to be for my website to launch this t-shirt brand. Little did I know everyone wanted to know what was my Instagram and social media. And I did not have either. Like I didn't have Instagram at all the day I had this event. So I decided to 
find somebody to help me create an Instagram page because I didn't yeah. even know how to do it at that time. So I reached out to someone that created an Instagram page and we launched that page, I think on the 2nd or 3rd of May. We already had a date that we were going to launch the t-shirt brand mm-hmm. on May 17th. So I was already ready for that. Unfortunately, my son went into the hospital on May 12th or oh, 11th. No. And then he ended up staying there for 20 days. So wow. during that time that we were in the hospital, I really wasn't going to launch Afro Unicorn because we were in the hospital and did not really understand why we were even there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I learned Instagram during that time. I learned hashtag strategies. I learned how to go find my audience. I had all the content already from the party. So I just started dropping those pictures and videos. And basically the way I started, like, Nikayla, if you were there and you were wearing an African unicorn shirt, I would say, hey, look at Nikayla rocking her African unicorn shirt, but be sure you follow side hustle pro and make yeah. sure that you do X, Y, Z. And this is what makes her unique, divine and magical. And people mm. saw that early on and they were like, Oh wow. If I go get a shirt, she's going to talk about my brand and my business. And that's exactly what we did. So we launched May. I was in the hospital when I launched it. Um, and yeah, from there, we just reached out to certain celebrities that identified themselves as black unicorn. And we got the likes of Tiffany Haddish, Alicia Keys, Sherry Shepard, a lot of people to jump on board within the first couple of months of us launching this brand. This was 2019. 2019. That's what I thought. And as you were launching, especially since you launched in the hospital, what was your fulfillment system at that time? Were you doing this all <laughs> on your own? <laughs> so the good thing about it is that I'm also an insurance agency um, yes. and I had this policy called a hospital indemnity policy. And if you guys don't have it, if you have children, you definitely should get it because it's extremely inexpensive and it paid me $250 a day. And then it was some extra money that it paid me as well. So I was able to hire a personal assistant while I was in the hospital with my son. Uh, And she went out and she sourced everything. She packaged everything and she started shipping everything for me. Nice. Nice. That's so smart. Thank you for that tip that you shared with everyone. You know, I think a lot of people know about disability insurance, all the different types of insurances you are well versed in because you own a state farm. Right. (laughs) So once you were able to get back to being in the business, what happened next? Life. So the day that my son got out of the hospital, the following day, my favorite uncle died of a massive heart attack. Oh, my God. 17 hours later, my other uncle, his brother died of pneumonia. Wow. And then we had a double funeral the following week and broke my grandmother's heart. She died six months later. It it was all gas, no breaks. Like for me, the I'm from Los Angeles. I launched my brand like right after Nipsey Hussle died. So I had this mind state of, you know, the marathon continues for me. It's all gas, no breaks. That's my slogan. And I hustled those early days and even still today. Like I have a social media manager, but I'm in my social media account all the time. I'm the one that's constantly engaging with people. I know these people. They know me. I went out and I found my audience. So I never used to when I got back to business. No, the business started in the hospital and it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. Wow. It's been it's literally been all gas, no breaks. I've heard you say all gas, no brakes. And, you know, that is definitely I don't even know how you did that power through like that, but it just goes to show your determination. So now I want to talk a little bit about the licensing piece, because whenever I meet new black women entrepreneurs and I'm learning about your business, even though it shouldn't be a surprise. It's always still a surprise to me when I see or read some kind of new record that we've broken or some kind of new thing that we've accomplished. So you are the first Black woman to own a fully licensed character brand. What does that mean? And how did you find out that you were the first? (laughs) Because it's a very small group, (laughs) number one. Um, And I, I see who's in the room and who looks like me and they don't. Mm-hmm. So the way that it happened and a lot of people, first let me just let people understand what being a licensed character brand is because it's not a space yes. that we've been in. So it goes over a lot of people's heads. I knew nothing about it until it was brought to me. So basically mm-hmm. Afro Unicorn is on the level of your Disney brands, 
your Marvel, your Nickelodeon, your, your was it MG, wherever LOL is, um, I think it's MGA. So that is what uh, being a licensed character brand is. Those are also my direct competitors. When you look for Afro Unicorn okay. products, it's not necessarily in the Black History Month section or the Black Curated section. It's in the character section next to Mickey, next to Elsa, next to Snitch. Like that is where you will find Afro Unicorn. Discovering that I was the first Black woman. I mean, there are no other Black licensed character brands that are owned by Black people. Disney does a great job with creating Black inspired characters, but Disney is not Black owned. Afro Unicorn is Black owned. Um, the way that I was able to get this opportunity is because of all the hard work that we've done building this grassroots brand through social media, empowering other people, showing how they were unique, divine, and magical, sharing their posts. 90% of all that you see on African Unicorn are our customers. One of the videos went viral six months after it was posted of a little girl named Cassidy Brianna taking photos in her African Unicorn tea. She has a big Afro and someone walked by her and said, I love your hair. With all the confidence in the world, she said, thank you, it's an Afro. And that video went viral. <laughs> so you're yeah. familiar with the video. So that video went viral. Everybody's mama was sharing it, including Beyonce's. <laughs> and then <laughs> Oprah Daily shared it. And then when the big O shared it, that's when Walmart saw it. And it wasn't that they Oprah like tag Afro Unicorn, but the comments were filled with that's Afro Unicorn's baby. That's Afro Unicorn's shirt. So the buyer then saw that and said, well, I need to find this Afro Unicorn brand. So I got an email that said, Afro Unicorn X Walmart collaboration, have you considered party supplies? And then we got on a call and that's when I learned about licensing and I had no idea what she was talking about, what was getting ready to happen, but I have now mastered it. So what does it actually mean? So, you know, a lot of us know trademarks, right? You you go to the U.S. Trademark and Patent Office website, you start the process, you, you know, work with an attorney, you or setting up an entity, you know how to start that process. How does one start the licensing process? And those are the very first steps. And I did that exactly everything that you said, the finding the attorney, the trademarking, having the entity, we are an escort, but I did that on day one. Because I always knew African Unicorn was going mm -hmm. to be big. I knew it was going to be a household name, worldwide brand. I've been quoted since 2019 saying this, but I didn't know that I would still be the CEO. I thought that I would have to okay. sell the brand to a Mattel or a Hasbro, somebody like that oh. to get this brand that worldwide exposure. Licensing allows me to still be 100% CEO. The owner owner of the brand and allow companies like Hasbro, Mattel to use my trademark that I own to produce products to sell into major retail. So that's how okay. we first started with my, and through the party supplies, there were two licensees. I'm the licensor. I give them the right to use my trademark. And that's how we got into the party supply section first. We're now, I have over 45 partners, about 500 products in retail right now, and over 20 different retailers. So what's the difference between, I've had many businesses come on this show and they have a product in Target or Walmart, and that product has a character on it. Now, yes, those products were probably in the... Um, you know, the Black History Month section. So is that why they didn't necessarily license that product and why they're not a, you know, licensed character partner? No, it's not. It's lack of knowledge. <laughs> it's a small knit mm -hmm. circle. Um, they yeah. don't know about it. Everyone just knows that they need to find a warehouse and a distribution company in China to manufacture their stuff. And they can go on, was it, Alibaba or whatever to order their products. And they Alibaba. Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba. Sorry. Yeah. Right, and they right, have right. a warehouse full of products that they're shipping out Um, because they don't know about licensing partners. I always go back to the infamous interview with Sway and Kanye 
Like at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. Kanye was talking about licensing. He also didn't understand it at that time either. And that's what his frustration with Sway was because he was saying like, I'm not getting the information that the Tommy Hilfiger's and the Ralph Lauren's like, they're able to get their products out to mass and I'm not winning at Mm -hmm. that. And Sway was like, well, Kanye, you're rich. You know, you got all the money. You got the facilities, you know, just do it yourself. And he's like, I lost 27 million trying to do it that way. Like you don't have the answers. I'm telling you there's something else out there and no one's having this conversation. You fast forward eight years later, he does a licensing deal with Adidas he did a bad contract because he didn't read it, but he did a, a, a licensing contract with Adidas and he became a billionaire, you know? And uh, people, when I say it now, like people make comments, they're like, oh, but he said Sway had the answers. Don't let Kanye fool you because Kanye was right down the street on PCH, <laughs> pulled up to Skechers, or at least he tried to pull up to Skechers after all that was done because he knows this is the easier way to make it happen. And it's almost impossible to scale at the level of the billion <laughs> without having a supportive partner network like licensing. 50 Cent did it. Like there's a few that have done it. FUBU is doing it. Like to get to the scale of the unicorn brand, and that's what we're all trying to be yeah. at a billion dollar level, it's almost impossible to try to yeah. have this warehouse and package your items. I'm really fascinated by this because at what point do you know if that's what you should pursue? So if you are you get called by Target and Walmart, you're so excited, like, okay, we're going to do a run. They're going to give me this many, uh, what do they call them, doors. Mm-hmm. Do you then say, oh, but also pay me to license the character on my T-shirt? So it's not the retailer. The retailer can do that, um, but most licensing okay. deals are with other third parties, other vendors. Um okay. I didn't know anything about licensing before I got into it. So I reached out to a couple of people to test the waters, to ask questions. And my manager now, his name is Askia Fountain. He reached out to somebody who happened to be Jojo Siwa's prior attorney. He told us to watch The Toys That Made Us on Netflix. And that is how I got my one-on-one in licensing. And those are the stories of Hello Kitty, Barbies, Star Wars, Mm -hmm. Ninja Turtles. So it's about all the classic brands and how they broke out in licensing. Licensing is not something that you you can go after, but licensing actually has to find you because there has to be a demand and a need for whatever the product that you have. Um, Here's a, a tidbit for you guys to take. It's a gem. There is licensing expos. It happens in Vegas every okay. single year in May or June, but you can just search licensing expo and there it's just like all the big names are there, all your Disney's, all your Marvel's and they have booths set up and you can go in and look at the Squishmallows and set up appointments mm-hmm. to talk to these different companies. They have one in Europe, which we're going to, it's called BLE, Brand Licensing Europe. So there, again, it's information. Like, we don't know this. (laughs) We don't know that Mm -hmm, these events mm -hmm. happen. And to your point, that conversation about doors, I was being coached by someone before I got into retail. And she's a real popular, has had her stuff into retail for a little bit. And she was telling me, I'm like, hey, Walmart hit me up. They want to bring me in. Like, what questions should I ask? And she was like, well, just so you know, um, they're not going to tell you because they they don't know the information yet. But if you want to ask them how many doors, she goes, but I'm letting you know, being a black brand, they're probably going to start off between like 100 to 300 doors to test the brand. So when I asked that question, the response that I got from the merchant blew me away because I was like, I know you don't know the answer, but can you tell me about how many doors? And she automatically was like, well, a minimum is going to be a thousand. I ended up going to all, all Walmart <laughs> doors, but, you know, initially she, so when I was like, whoa, we just almost, that's not what I heard. That what I yeah. heard. So that's when I knew, oh, you're getting ready to step into a whole nother space, a whole nother dimension. Yes. I do and what we're doing with learning this licensing game and learning who the players are. We are working on building our own licensing agency for the urban side. Oh. To okay. find okay. those brands out there that would work really great in this space and helping coach them mm-hmm. and navigate them through the different partners and seeing 
what traction we can get with their brand. We're starting mm -hmm. it with Thank You. It's an Afro with Cassidy. Brianna, Walmart has just purchased her books. So she's going in okay. August 15th, I believe. And then um, she has some other retailers that are lined up. So we want to just help other brands build it out. But you, there has to be a demand. There has to be a need for what a you demand. have. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because what you created right now, it seems like, oh, that's a no brainer. Of course, I want to have party supplies with Afro unicorn on it. That's amazing. I'm so glad I don't have to just default to the white unicorn. But before it was created, we just accepted the status quo. Right. And so as you're thinking, you know, you guys, as you're listening and thinking about things, don't just get caught up in, oh, I like this character. It looks cute. <laughs> Think that does anyone else want it? Does anyone else want it for their kid's birthday party or for holidays or what have you? When I started podcasting, I knew I wanted to sell merch. So I started small with one t-shirt. Now I'm selling t-shirts, hoodies, joggers, mugs, you name it. And it's so easy, all because I use Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million dollars stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling beauty products or content plans, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person point of sale system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort. Thanks to Shopify magic, your AI powered all-star. What I love about Shopify is no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash hustle pro, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash hustle pro now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Again, that's shopify.com slash hustle pro. How do you show the demand? So let's say you created this and you do see potential how do you show demand? Well, first I would check that white space. Like, are there other things that look like what you're doing? Are they currently yes. already out there? And not saying that you can't do it, but just you have a better chance when ain't nobody else doing what you're doing. And you're right. in that. And Don't that. come with a, a remix on the unicorn. <laughs> I'm a black unicorn. Because Don't you, you will get a, a whole cease and desist and we will be in litigation. Yes. Um, but anyways, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know because people see an image on the internet. They're like, oh, this is cute. No, 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 no. I'm dealing with that. <laughs> as we speak. But anyways, um, so a lot of people come to me and they're in my DM. And they're like, "We, I want to do what you do. How do I get into Target? How do I get into Walmart? And I always go back to, well, what are you doing now to build the brand? Yes. Who is your audience? Like, are, are you feeling the need? What are you supplying? Like, how, what are your sales currently? Oh, I'm going on your social media page. You haven't posted in two weeks. What are we even talking? Like, why are you DMing me? You don't, right, right. you don't take this serious whatsoever. So why would you think that any retailer or vendor will want mm. to like put up millions of dollars when you don't even push your brand? So you have to yeah. test the demand yourself on your own yes. platform. Again, Walmart saw those yes. posts and they saw the comments about Afro Unicorn because we worked very hard to build a loyal following. A lot of people are out here just buying followers. I am so mm -hmm. against that. And I have preached this. Yeah. With Afro Unicorn, I used to go live every single Saturday morning and I would give business advice. I would bring people mm -hmm. like you on to talk to the people to try to 
give them some yeah. cents and some quarters and some nickels. Um, <laughs> Not some, oh, because hey, I thought you meant like cents. No, 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 <laughs> I, I, just, I just put a pun on it, but yes. Um, mm-hmm. Because I've always preached about you got to show up as your authentic self. And all of this stuff out here about buying followers and trying to make your brand look like it's not, it's not helping you because you can't test your right. true audience. You're flooded with bots. You're flooded with people who don't look like you, who will never try your yep. product. So you don't even know if it's actually something people right. want because you're talking. When it's time to have people click on that link in bio, they're not really your audience. So you're not seeing that conversion. You're not seeing that traction to your website. Correct. So don't just get caught up in this Hollywood or whatever of social media, like you want to find your core audience. Like it's so important before we can even start having, before you hit me in my DM about how do you get in Target? How do you get in Walmart? I need to see what are you doing with what you have? And a lot of people make all these excuses. That's why it's so important for me to talk about, I have multiple businesses. I'm a single mom of two boys. I birthed this when I was in the hospital. I had two uncles to pass away. My grandmother died because a lot of people would give me all their excuses on why they ain't posted since last week. I don't want to hear it. What were the startup costs like for this business? So the cool thing about the t-shirt business, um, and I've done a video on this before, you can launch a t-shirt brand within 48 hours, less than 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. Through Shopify, Printify, um, Shopify and Printify, I think to start, you know, $29 a month or something, it's not a lot of money. You upload your Mm -hmm. images to their site. So it doesn't take a lot of money to start a t-shirt brand. For licensing, it doesn't take anything. But you can't even get to licensing (laughs) until you have built a following, built a brand. And I also want to add, most of the times with character licensing, they won't even consider it unless it has content. We're very fortunate and we are a unicorn brand because we got into this game heavy without having content. We have signed, you know, our production deals and we're going to be working on the animated cartoon series and all of that. But for the most part, you got to have content to be that makes sense. in this licensing character space. You, there's other licensing yeah. areas. Char- I'm just in the character space right now, but there's so many other things that you can license. I have books coming out um, and I have four licensing publishing deals, one being Random House. I have three mm. books coming out with Random House mm-hmm. next month. This is next month. Okay. So yeah, and next next month in September. And those are licensed deals as well. So there's so many avenues for licensing. Um, you're, there's companies like Ellen Tracy, I think that's how you say it. That's a licensed brand. Is that clothing? Clothing. Calvin Klein, licensed. Okay. Like so many, okay. there's so many licensing deals out there. A lot of the candy companies licensed. It's good that you're bringing attention to this um, because I haven't actually done a lot of content around this on this podcast. So you're teaching me and I know um, you're teaching others as well. And now it's something that will be in our minds as we pursue our business ideas. Like what space can we really be in? What are the other opportunities that we're overlooking that this could lead to? And how long were you doing business yourself before Walmart came calling? So we launched May of 2019 and Walmart called us in August of 2021. Okay. So this is something where you had time to build and show. And it's good that we emphasize that because this is not something that happened overnight. And I think because we jumped right into it, it can sound like that. Like, boom, you started, Walmart called you. (laughs) And then also it's the level of what I did within those two years before Walmart called me. Um, I forget the author's name, Malcolm. I got to look at it, but Malcolm Gladwell. there you go. And we talk about the 10,000 10, 10, yes, hours. Yes, yes, ma'am. Because yes. what I do, what I did was a lot, a lot of work. Like I spent oh, yes. every day when I was in that hospital, you know, at least seven hours on social media, finding my audience and telling them, like I would yeah. go into your comments and say, Hey, have you ever seen an Afro unicorn before? I created a brand of women of color who hustle, follow the movement. Like I would go in there 
and make sure I hit 50 people within an hour with that comment. Once yep. I knew that they associated themselves with either Black Girl uh, Magic or Black Unicorn or mm-hmm. Serial Entrepreneur, I was like, hey, yes. I got something that can relate with you. So I put mm-hmm. in a ton of hours. So if y'all just showing up to your side hustle for an hour a day, <laughs> I don't think Walmart's <laughs> calling you not even in those two years. Yes, you sound so unimpressed. Like, do not tell me that you just, you know, did this little bit of work and want these big, big, big results. results. I'm big on going out and finding your audience too. And I think that is a big misconception with social particularly Instagram, that if you just post and you do amazing, perfectly laid out aesthetic feeds or or reels, I mean, nowadays, yeah, reels can help you grow. They can, but it's hit or miss. So why not supplement that with also literally going out there and letting people know like, hey, this is what I do. And so you can do that with engaging with other people who you think will be interested in your content, your business, your brand. And it's not a spammy thing. I'm not just saying, oh, go follow everybody. Like really hone in on who your person is. Who are they following? What hashtags, what people? And go out there and get to know them. Like really do some social media networking. So that's why I always say social media is a place to be social, not a place to be seen. (laughs) I like that. I like that. Yeah. I love to say like, it's just like in-person networking. It's just social media, the virtual element of it. But yeah, it's not about being seen. It is about being social. I like that as well. Did you do anything in addition to social, anything else to market your business that you can share? Any tips? So we definitely out the gate when we knew we had a big company like Walmart that wanted our brand Mm -hmm. and we were going to be in so many doors, which were all of them. Um, We're like, okay, so who does the marketing? Like how? And they're like, oh, you. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that funny? Like you can be in store, but you still got to market your own product. People get so hyped about going into retail, but they don't even understand that that's just a holding space for your products. They're not spending marketing dollars to drive people to your particular product. We've been blessed to have some great partnerships with our retailers and they have done some things for us and I'm extremely thankful. But at the end of the day, marketing, if you're in retail, falls on you as the brand owner. So one of the things that we did very fast was to hire a a PR company, a publicist, to help get the national news out about Afro Unicorn. Because again, my mindset when I went in was like, okay, I'm going to have about 200 doors that I'm going to direct people in. And that even kind of scared me a little bit because I run and operate, you know, my insurance agency, but that's one door. I'm marketing to get you to one address in one city. But when you talk about multiple doors, and this is the stuff people don't think about. And I remember in the beginning, I don't ever let fear grip me to where I don't move. But what I allow fear to do for me is to push me into coming up with an action plan. Because once I have a plan of action, then I can overcome that, that fear or that anxiety I have. But if you truly think about the idea, and I want you guys to really listen to this because a lot of people are so gun ho to get into retail. 3,500 doors, 3,500 doors, they say your product is going to go into. It could be in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, all these areas where people (laughs) don't even necessarily look like you, or you don't even know anyone in these areas, but it's up to you to market your products in those stores. It's a big responsibility and it's a heavy, heavy weight. How do you do that? Do you fly out to the different states and do events? You got to come up with some kind of plan. So for us, I was like, there is no way I can pop up to all 50 states. So we have to identify (laughs) the key markets. We have to have great publicity. It's not always easy finding the right publicist either because we're now having this conversation that we feel like publicists have a run. Like they go through their contacts and then they'll dry up. So it's almost like you got to keep it fresh to get new leads. So we were thankfully for Afro Unicorn, we launched in retail in June 
and mm-hmm. August, I was being interviewed by the Gail King, which was amazing. Um, so we started going for national. So we had CBS Mornings, and I did Good Morning America. So we did a lot of national news um, stories. So we try to do as many national news stories. We try to do... Um, you know, a lot of press releases and what you have to do when you're in this space, you have to, which we did it at for unicorn. Like um, every single Saturday I share small businesses for free on my stories. I've been doing that yeah. since the beginning. And before when I would mm-hmm. share them, I would go out, I would like post say, Hey, I'm going to share your business and our story crickets. But I always say, <laughs> you got to start the wave that you want to see. So I would just go down my timeline. I saw that you had a business and I would just go promote you into my story and tag Small Business Saturday Mm -hmm. until people caught on and people saw, oh, this is what they do over there. Now, before I even get up on Saturday morning, my inbox is full of businesses, but you have to create that. So with going into retail, what we did, you have to create that buzz. So you got to get press releases Mm -hmm. out there. You got to get people to start talking about your brand and then organically other news outlets will start picking it up and covering that story. And then you want to do events and you want to find different foundations. Like we're doing an event with girls in Colorado a couple of weeks. I'm dropping a whole hair care line. So we're going to give 20 young girls who are going back to school, new hairdos for school. And we're going to be marketing the hair care products and, I just got the phone with the company Partake and they have cookies. I have lunch pails. So we're going to do a collaboration together where we're going to do a giveaway. You get your cookies. Nice. I just spoke to Denise. Yeah. yeah, We're having an update episode. So I love seeing that collaboration. Yes. So that's what it's all about. Just seeing all the opportunities of marketing that you can create to create some noise. And it's very hard for us because of who our competitors are. Our competitors, again, Disney, Marvel, and Nick. I'm not graded on a curve. Yeah. I'm not graded against other Black brands. I'm <laughs> graded against billion-dollar companies who have been in business for 50 to 100 years. When they run those reports, they are looking. It's party supplies, and there's 10 characters over there. Spider-Man, Batman, Elsa, Afro-Unicorn. They're like, oh, Afro-Unicorn is this level on the list. Like, yeah, because... They're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Like, how are you going to compete with, like, Princess Tiana and Elsa? Come on. It's not like you can't, but you have so many years to catch up with. And they don't care. Of and exposure. So, they don't right. care. They don't care. But you're so, still there. Yeah, They're we're still, still there, there, but we want to stay there. And the problem is, if we don't, if African Corn is not successful, they will not bring on another. Mm-hmm. So we have to ensure, at least I have to ensure the brand's success and getting the word out there. And I'm thankful for you giving me the opportunity to be on your platform because it matters. It all matters. Yes. Walmart shared that only 12% of their customers are African-American. That's a mm. very small number. In comparison to, I'm surprised by that. I don't know why I'm surprised by that. <laughs> I tell you, and man, so, you just never know. And if all 12 percent of y'all don't know about Afro Unicorn, I got a problem. Yep. So I have to do the work. We have to, and I do really hope that. I guess I, I haven't been in the space of looking for character products, right? So sometimes that can be a limitation. Like all of us are in our social media silos. And if you're literally not looking for that, you might not come across it. So I can understand why it's so hard to, you know, make sure you continue to get exposure. It's not that we don't want to know that it's there. It just goes to show how much you can be in a bubble and not know. So this is why, like I said, I love this show. I love learning about new types of products. And I aim to really try to learn about different spaces and not just keep showing the same kind of brands over and over again. So thank you for allowing me to do that and for bringing so much knowledge about licensing to today's episode. Like this was really, really informative. Before we get into the lightning round, I would love to know what your experience on the finance side has been. A lot of people lose money when they get into retail. They got to fulfill and do all this stuff, even though licensing might be different because, right, they're going to do some of that for you, I assume. So what's been your experience? Um, Profitable, breaking even? Where are you 
So we're definitely profitable. Um, our, I think I posted this last quarter. So we launched in June of last year in retail. And then, uh, so last year, I think we ended at 5 million in gross sales. Woo-hoo. Sorry, it was three. And then this first quarter, we were already at five. Wow. <laughs> so that's amazing. Um, there is no upfront cost that I have outside of marketing. Because I'm spending a ton of money okay. though <laughs> to get the uh-huh, name uh-huh. of African Crown. My manager literally just said today, he was like, people don't understand, you know, 90% of that money is going back out. Yeah, it does go out. But I will say we're profitable because I'm able to employ, we're now like at six different people now. I have a whole okay. agency that we also employ. You know, my, and my kids, they don't, they don't worry about nothing. So we good. But the, we the good. good thing about yes. licensing is that they actually pay you to license. So what I try to do with the money, um, there's a thing called MG, which is minimum guarantee. So on most okay. licensing deals, they pay you part of that contract deals that they give you in advance. Like the contract not only includes a royalty rate, but it also includes an MG. So they have to pay you a dollar amount. And we've had them as high, as low as, actually, I don't want to say as low as. We've had them as high <laughs> as right now. I think <laughs> like, I can tell y'all because it could vary. So you could have no MGs depending on the type of deal. They could go up to a million. Okay. We haven't gotten up to a million on MGs nice. yet, but we've gotten yeah. up to, I think, 300 on an MG. Okay. So that's money that they write that check out to you. Okay. Yeah. And then they have to, that's awesome. Then they have to go out and sell it into retail to recoup right. that money that they've already given to you. And then mm-hmm. after they recouped it, then you start seeing royalties on top of that. Okay. So what we're doing, we take our MG money and we put it into marketing. And do they do a little bit? Can you petition to say, all right, you know, summertime's coming up. Can Afro Unicorn be in one of the featured homepage spreads on planning a summer barbecue or something like that? Can you do any of that to get a little bit of their visibility? I do. Okay. I do. Because I let them know, look, the people at Walmart, they know me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, right. Good, because, good. I had a feeling. I'm had a trying feeling, to get though. every single opportunity. Walmart is the largest right. retailer in the U.S. Um, and they are the beast. And so I'm um, mm-hmm. forever knocking on their doors. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, I emailed them. And nobody hit me back. I'm like, okay, it's been 72 hours. Where's the next email going out? Like, that's how I am. <laughs> um because there's so many opportunities that they have on a marketing standpoint. Again, it's not their responsibility, mm-hmm. but however, especially as yes. a black owned brand, you want to knock at their doors and say, Hey, what opportunities mm-hmm. do you have? So I've been very blessed to be featured on Walmart's homepage for their black history. I've been able to be featured for summer because we had all these summer toys. Yes. So they had us featured there. I'm trying to work with them now for black history next month. They have had me a part of the BET, her experience. Like they know, but they Ooh. say, April, you can't be on everything. I'm like, why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and, why why not? <laughs> and why not? And why not? Has anybody right, complained? Right, right. right. But no, you, you got to because how else can I sell 3,000 right. plus doors next to Nikki? Exactly. Like, I need you guys yeah, to support. Yeah. If you guys are saying that you want diverse brands in your stores, and these are also the conversations that I have with these executives, you cannot say mm-hmm. that you want diversity in your stores and you're not willing to to truly be the gap that's needed for them to be successful. So I'm constantly exactly. not having these conversations just for Afro Unicorn, but for all of the black brands saying, what are you guys doing for visibility? Walmart is one of the largest retailers, but they're also the largest retailer to support the most black businesses. I know people think it's the other, but Walmart's the largest. So that's yeah. why they support so many of us, but we just don't know. We don't know it because they're not screaming it from the mountaintops. They're not showing it inside the okay. stores. I'm like, let's do a better job of bringing all these black brands together so the community can see how much you support black brands because they do support black brands. And we could get that 12% number up a little bit higher. But let the people know Absolutely. that you guys really support 
Black brands, because they really, really do. And they do a great job. And so does Target. But we all know that. We want people to know that we're supported everywhere. And I don't know about y'all, but I now want to create a character that I can license. And (laughs) that's what Nikayla is going to be researching next. (laughs) I love it. So now, April, let's shift into the lightning round. You just answer the very first thing that comes to mind. All right. Okay. Number one, what is a resource, not Google, that has helped you in your business that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? The book, Who, Not How. Discovering the who to do it and not always the how. Number two, who is a non-celebrity, non-famous Black woman entrepreneur who you would switch places with for a day and why? Ooh, okay. That one came at me at lightning speed. I would like to switch places with you, Nikayla, because I like interviewing people. Uh, (laughs) You learn a lot from interviewing people. Definitely learn a lot. And then afterwards, I'm like, okay, let's have this follow-up conversation. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Once I have my character ready. Uh, uh, But thank you. Number three, what's a non-negotiable part of your day these days? Journaling. So Uh I manifest and I journal every day. And if I skip it, the day is off. So I have to make sure I'm writing down the three things that major big goals I want to happen, the 10 things that I'm grateful for, and that one little daily goal that I want to happen for today. If I don't do it, my day is off. Mm. Okay. Number four, what's a personal trait about you that has contributed to your success? I'm tenacious. I think that's what I heard you say. The parallel. Yeah, I'm just... It's all gas, no brakes. If I see a wall, I'm going through it. If what I want is on the other Mm -hmm. side. And then finally, number five, what is your parting advice for fellow side hustlers who one day want to be their own boss, but are worried about not having a steady paycheck? You have to believe in whatever it is that you want to do with all of your heart, mind, every being like this is something you think about when you wake up It's something you think about before Mm -hmm. you go to sleep and if it's not it just may not be the right fit for you because what i know with people with nine to five jobs you know that regardless you're going to get that check it's different when you know you're responsible for that check so before you jump into it check your temperature for commitment and hard work Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people make it look easy. I make it look easy because yeah. I'm cute, but <laughs> you're over here with concealer on. Uh, <laughs> Listen, concealer it's, it's, is a daily requirement, okay, yeah, for me. I, look, now, I can, can okay, I change it's, my answer for the daily? Um, it's concealer. But no, <laughs> it's, it's, concealer. it's hard work. And, and if you're not a person, yeah. if, you're not, if you're not working hard on your job right now, but you're getting a paycheck, if you're not working hard, you're not going to work hard for yourself. You people think, oh, I'm just not working hard because mm-hmm. I work for somebody else. No, it's your mindset. You're just not a hard worker. It's a character flaw. <laughs> tell, tell it like it is. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Nikayla. They didn't warn you. I'm, I'm, I'm a real one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why they don't want to give me my so own guys, show. I get it. I get it. Exactly. <laughs> April keeps it real. And, um, you know, it's true because I know for one, like, when... Oh, some of the jobs I worked at, I was definitely flying under the radar at a certain point, right? Because I was more interested in my side hustle. But you, you can't do that for your own job. So I understand what you, you mean. Like, you when you have your really own. check in with yourself. Yeah, you can't just fly under the radar and still get no. paid. So we really do have to be honest with ourselves. Like, all right, what am I willing to do here? So <laughs> where can people connect with you and get more of your advice and your lessons, April, after this episode? So you can get more of me at Got April Showers on Instagram. Follow me there. I'm going to start going live every Sunday morning to give some inspiration Mm. and some thoughts and talk about licensing. Um, And then the brand is Unicorn underscore official. That's a good place to tap in, especially if you're on business. Because again, I wake up at 6 a.m. every Saturday morning to share your businesses. We say I'm on Pacific Standard Time, but I say 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 6 a.m. for me. So don't be like, oh, it's so early. I'm up at 6 a.m. Get up. (laughs) 
It's free. <laughs> Just send me your business. I'm going to reshare it for yes. free. I love that idea. I might have to do a modified at some point. Um, so guys, there you have it. April, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. I've learned so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on all that you have accomplished. And guys, I will talk to you next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six bullet Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you'll receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.